Backroads is made possible by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund with money by the vote of the people November 4th, 2008. Do we have any sing-alongers this evening? Anybody who's in the choir? This song is for you all. This is a song where you get to sing along as loudly and as out of tune as you'd like, and no one's gonna judge you, <laughs> except for maybe yourself, but be brave. I'm gonna sing a couple old labor songs to start off the evening, part of a project I've been working on for a little bit over a decade. This song is called Hallelujah, I'm a Bum. It's a celebration of being a bum, but it's kind of a sarcastic celebration. So instead of choosing to be a bum, you're kind of forced into it, which is not always the best of circumstances. But we're going to sing about it, which always makes everything better. Your part goes like this. Hallelujah, I'm a bum. Hallelujah, bum again. Yeah, hallelujah, you'll give us a handout to revive us again. I know you're thinking that's really fast, but uh, Troy's been recording me, and it's actually like I'm half, I'm like half timing it right now for y'all. So you want to try it with me? Yeah, hallelujah, I'm a bum, hallelujah, bum again. Yeah, hallelujah, you'll give us a hand out to revive us again. You guys got it. And they say, why don't you work like other people do? How the hell can I work when there's no work to do? Hallelujah, I'm a bum, hallelujah, bum again. Yeah, hallelujah, you'll give us a hand out to revive us again. And I went to a house and I knocked on the door and the lady said, Scram Bum, you've been here before. Hallelujah, I'm a bum. Hallelujah, bum again. Yeah, hallelujah, you'll give us a hand out to revive us again. And I went to a bar and I asked for a drink and they gave me a cup and said, there's the sink. Hallelujah, I'm a bum. Hallelujah, bum again. Yeah, hallelujah, you'll give us a hand out to revive us again. This is going out to my old boss at the crunchy health food granola store down in Wichita, Kansas, who fired me for having mono in a right to work state. Y'all know about right to work states? Means you got no rights to work. It's cleverly named. <laughs> well, I love my boss. She's a good friend of mine. That's why I'm starving out on this bread line. Hallelujah, I'm a bum. Hallelujah, bum again. Yeah, hallelujah, you'll give us a hand out to revive us again. And they say, why don't you save all the money you earn? I said, if I didn't eat, I'd have money to burn. Hallelujah, I'm a bum. Hallelujah, bum again. Yeah, hallelujah, you'll give us a hand out to revive us again. Thanks. My name is Shannon Murray, and I am a storyteller and a historian. I play folk punk music and utilize that medium to, to do just that, to tell stories, to preserve history, to connect our past with our present, to connect political struggles with personal struggles. And what is your history with music? How did, when did you become interested in it? When did you become a performer? Mm -hmm. It's actually quite a tale. I've always been really interested in music. I was running around making up probably horrible out of tune songs from as, like, as long as I can remember. I started playing clarinet in maybe fifth grade or sixth grade and was told that I was terrible and that I should quit and do something else with my time. I also got told that I shouldn't be in the choir because I couldn't match pitch, so a lot of um, discouragement <laughs> early on. I'm tenacious, so I kept doing those things. I got better with practice. I went to college for music, actually, for clarinet performance, and then walked into the Northern Inopa Mic Night and saw people playing, and it just, like, that just hit me, that, that atmosphere, that vibe, that everything that was there, I wanted to get up on stage and play. And so I got a guitar and a month later I was up playing terrible Neil Young covers and another month later I was playing terrible originals and just kept working at it and practicing. And this next song I wrote about Mother Jones, who was part of the IWW, and she was pretty formidable. At the age of 83, she was called the most dangerous woman in America, right? She looks like your grandma. She's wearing like a high collared dress, very prim and proper, but she was uh, feisty. She got arrested a bunch. So this is going out to Mother Jones and all the folks who are, who are fighting right now today, using the similar tactics and putting their lives on the line to make the world a better place. And like a phoenix, she rose up from the ashes, abiding by no laws but her own. She stoked the flames of rage and sparks of hope, just doing what she knew must be done. Oh, Mother Jones, Mother Jones, oh, she's the toughest gal you'll ever know. Oh, 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 Mother Jones, Mother Jones, oh, don't you mess with her, you ought to know. She fought tirelessly for the workers, steadfast, unrelenting in her aim. There was no jail cell built strong enough to hold her. And no matter what the cause, she fought to win. Oh, Mother Jones, Mother Jones, oh, she's 
the toughest gal you'll ever know. Oh, 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 Mother Jones, Mother Jones. Oh, don't you mess with her, you ought to know. And she stared down all those men with their guns. Oh, no National Guard was gonna spook her. And with her hands over the barrel of a gun, she dared them to shoot her. She was just doing what she knew must be done. Oh, Mother Jones, Mother Jones. Oh, she's the toughest gal you'll ever know. Oh, 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 Mother Jones, Mother Jones. Oh, don't you mess with her, you ought to know. She said, we'll pray for the dead and we'll fight like hell for the living. She said, we'll pray for the dead and we'll fight like hell for the living. She said, we'll pray for the dead and we'll fight like hell for the living. Thanks. The IWW songs were, I was just hanging out with a friend reading Rise Up Singing, which is a great book of folk songs, and we found that song Hallelujah, I'm a Bum, and made up a melody, and we were singing it and laughing, and it so resonated with me, this song about poverty and kind of the when you don't have the choice to be poor, and it's forced upon you because you can't find a good job, or you're not making enough money, or you get fired, and, and it was still really relevant and really knew and fell in love with that song and started researching the IWW and found out later that my great-grandfather and his brother were both in the IWW. So it's kind of a neat family connection. Made me feel like a little less alone in my politics <laughs> and my love for those songs. So I find a lot of comfort in, in history that is so similar to today in, the, the, in that the struggles that we're dealing with, a lot of people have, have dealt with and have been dealing with for hundreds of years, but it's sort of at the same time depressing, but also there are these tools and this long and rich history of people fighting back and, and trying to create different systems. And so these, uh, these next two songs, I got an um, artist residency through Springboard to go to Fergus Falls and live um, for a couple weeks at the, on the grounds of the old um, state hospital there, is a mental hospital. And I've been doing research on patients who were there from about 1890 to 1920 and researching their lives and sort of looking for the connections, kind of the confluence of poverty and trauma and mental health and work. And so kind of looking for different working class people's lives and looking at their stories and, and sort of trying to make sense of it, which is an impossible thing to do, of course. There's so many pieces missing because these people were poor and often um, illiterate or, or at least illiterate in English, which is the language I speak. I found some really good stuff written in Norwegian, but I don't speak Norwegian. <laughs> And so I've been trying to piece together these lives, and, and I found some really great stories. And this first one um, is about this woman, Anna, whose husband died. They were doing pretty well. They had the farm um, you know, securely in their names, which was something that was pretty rare. A lot of immigrant farmers lived more on the edge, and they were doing all right. And then her husband died tragically in an accident. And two years later, she was losing the farm, and she was institutionalized. And she ended up passing away of tuberculosis in the mental hospital. And it's, it's sort of her life was one that stuck out a lot to me because I, I connected with it. It's similar to a story in my family. It was also interesting in that her story was so common. There were so many people who lost their farm and then were institutionalized. And so kind of wanted to, to write this song. A lot of it is fictionalized because, like I said, there wasn't a lot of information. So I had to use my imagination, which is something I'm not always comfortable with in the context of songwriting. I like to be, I like to find the truth <laughs> of things, maybe in all areas of life. But so part of this is, is sort of what I imagine happened. And I'm hoping to do more research and see if I'm right. Close my eyes, I don't want to see it. How close the edges, you know we can feel it. One winter early, though we're planning for the year we finally get ahead. And I thought you'd be coming home again But you never came home You never came home We buried you down in the ground With all that hope here on this land That we had found We are burying it deep in the ground Oh, through accident The precipice we found I 
worked hard as any man can Held my own for two whole years and then Sheriff Billings took my babies He says I gotta rest my pretty head And they'll be coming home when I am well they never came home, they never came home They buried me inside these walls and There's no hope left for me, there's nothing here at all Oh, in these walls they have buried me Oh, in this life it's cruel and it's crushing me And I cannot eat, I can't sleep Oh, and when I do, all I do is dream Of running away, running back to you Try as I may There are some dreams, they never come true And there are some dreams, they're always falling through Sang in minor keys Oh, in this ground They will bury me And there'll be No more singing Do, re, mi And there'll be No more singing Do, re, mi And there'll be No more singing For me Thanks This next story is about this, this man named Otto who was a painter and he got lead poisoning, developed dementia or memory loss and all kinds of other problems um, from that lead exposure. And his story was pretty, har pretty hard to read and I, I kept just thinking about his wife and, and, and sort of like that, that slow decline and I was thinking a lot about his family and sort of how that, how that played out. And so I ended up writing this song from the perspective of his, his wife. And a lot of it's fictionalized. I don't know the conversations that they had, but in my mind, this is how it went. And I miss you all of the time, even when you're right there next to me. And I didn't know I could feel like this I didn't know I could feel so alone And I know we said we would do this until we were dead But you're already there and you're standing next to me Walking right next to me, breathing right next to me But mostly you're just falling down I don't know how to grieve you right now when you're gone, but you're still in my arms. And I'm finding promises I made so hard to keep. I miss your beautiful face I miss your beautiful mind I miss all the things that we said we'd do someday when we finally had the time And you said be strong But I didn't know you meant this strong Or for this long And you're standing next to me Walking right next to me Breathing right next to me But most you're just falling down Yeah, mostly you're just falling down And I don't know how to grieve you right now when you're gone But you're still in my heart a two-year decline and you made me resign to farewells when our time had come. 
When you looked in my eyes and didn't recognize the woman you loved. Thanks. It's a pretty big responsibility to tell someone else's story when I'm looking back in history at someone like Lucy Parsons or this project I'm doing with the Fergus Falls um, State Hospital, talking about the lives of people who were at the mental health hospital there. It feels like a big responsibility to tell those stories, but I try to approach it from finding a place where I can connect authentically with my story. And I think those opportunities are there often. I think it's also interesting, so often that autobiographical singer-songwriter thing is sort of fabricated. I've had friends who've written really amazing songs and I want to talk to them about this thing that happened in their life and they just are like, actually that didn't happen. Like I'm, PJ Harvey I think is a good example of that. Like she just makes up characters and, and personifies them and so people think it's autobiographical but it's actually sort of a, a fictional product of her brain which is, which is another way to approach it. I've always been um, attached to approaching it from what I'm feeling and what I experience, so yeah. This next song is a, it's a breakup song, which I know you traditionally write after relationships end, but I wrote the first verse after a first date, and then I just kept writing verses <laughs> until the relationship ended, because I knew it was going to end, <laughs> obviously, I was right. <laughs> And then I started wondering if I had like manifested it myself by being so certain. But either way, I got the song written, so it's not a total loss, right? <laughs> you can't make that stuff up. such certainty and still I end up here and if I would have known I would have run like hell if I would have known I would have run like hell oh well and I could see this coming like remembering a dream premonition or manifestation it's all the same to me oh and if i wouldn't know i would have run like hell if i would have known i would have run like hell oh well I've been writing this song since the day we met, oh, oh. And it'd be funny, it'd be funny if it wasn't true. Oh, oh, I've been writing this song since the day we met, oh, oh. And it'd be funny, it'd be funny if it wasn't true. I don't want to be your ball and chain. I 
don't wanna feel that way again. No, and if I would've known, I would've run like hell. If I would've known, I would've run like hell. No, no, no. If I would've known, I still would have invited you here, my. Thanks. What's it like to be a musician in northern Minnesota? I love it. I choose to live here. I made a very conscious decision to move back here when I was touring a lot. I took a break from music, lived here, started back to touring. Um, I think it certainly in some ways would be easier to go to a bigger city where there's a set scene, where you can make connections. But for me, living here feels authentic. It's where I'm from. It's my community. And going outside of that can both be affirming in that people are often shocked that, like, where do you live? Oh, did you choose to? No, actually, I'm from there. Why don't you move to the city? and sort of um, repping for your small town and, and letting people know it's okay to be an artist in a small town. And certainly we're, we're blessed with a, a, a bunch of amazing artists, visual artists, writers, musicians. But yeah, it's, it is challenging and it's, it's also rewarding. I, I mostly like to, to let people know that their conceptions of small town living in northern Minnesota are wrong. <laughs> This, this is the title track off the last album that I just released um, called Collecting Anchors. And it was, a, it was a really, like I said, really healing and amazing project. And I got to record with a bunch of other musicians. And um, just the whole process was really, really great. And I'm really proud of what we created. And this song is the title track. And sometimes I write songs and I don't know what they're supposed to teach me. And then one day it sort of just comes to me like, oh, yeah, that's why that song is here. And I don't know where they come from, but I'm really appreciative that they do. And, and this song is sort of, for me, is thinking about heavy stuff, like the, the traumas of our lives sort of being anchors. And I was thinking about them for so long as like this negative thing, like holding me back. And then I, I, one day I was thinking about how in so many ways they've held me in place um, in lots of different positive ways and, and how, how I can use those anchors to stay where I wanna be in life. Get tethered to the places I most fear. And this feeling is akin to drowning. And I don't know if I want out of here, but I gotta get out of here. I gotta get out of here. And nobody knows. Your voice inside my head, it's pounding. I can't seem to think of anyone but you. And I've grown accustomed to being alone in my head. Oh, but I'd rather be in there with you. Yeah, I'd rather be in there with you. Nobody, nobody ever. Every time you're getting too close, you're too close. So there I go, I'll push you away. And I'd offer up to you this heart, dear. If it also wasn't screaming, no, no, no way. 
Yeah, don't you come near me, I'm so far from okay. Yeah, I, I am so far from okay. Nobody, nobody ever asked me. Nobody, nobody ever did. Oh, 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 no. Nobody, nobody ever asked me. If I could open up wide, open up wide and feel like this. I don't want to feel like this. I don't want to feel like this. Here I am collecting anchors. You're tethered to the places I most fear. Thank you all. Have a really awesome night. I can write a song about an issue that's really sensitive and people will get very hot and will yell and won't be able to come to any sort of resolution, but if I can sing about it in a way that asks more questions and presents more thoughts, then I can get at that issue in a way that people are open to listening and hearing and connecting. I think, yeah, ultimately that music is a way, it's a way we connect with each other and with ourselves. Backroads is made possible by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund with money by the vote of the people November 4th, 2008.